Hi guys, this is Raju from Tectonic. I've had a few people ask me before if there's a way to transfer files between an Android phone and a PC without using a USB cable. Now, I can understand the frustration involved in trying to find a USB cable when you need one, especially if you're not at home. There are plenty of applications out there to do this, but I've picked two of the best ways of doing it. The first method will be using an FTP application. This method requires that both devices are on the same network. Basically, you'll have to be connected to the same router. To demonstrate how it works, I'll be sending these two MP3 files. Um, you can see it's 12.8 megs in total. So go to the Play Store. Search for Wi-Fi FTP server and install that. It shouldn't take too long to install it. It's a fairly small app. Open the application. This is the folder I'll be moving the files to. Press start, allow all permissions. There's the FTP URL, your user ID and password. Now go into the address bar and type in that URL. You won't need to type in the password or the user ID. Now I'm just going to go into that test folder. Just copy as you normally would and then paste into that folder. And you can see it's pretty much instant. You can do it the other way around as well. So you can move files from your phone to your computer. So I'll just delete these just to show you. Again, copy as you normally would. And then paste it into your target folder. Using this method, you can also manage your files and your folders on the phone the same way you would on your computer. Now onto the second method. For this, you don't need to be on the same network, but both devices have to be connected to the internet. For demonstration purposes, I've got three different file types here, APK, JPEG, and a PDF. So go into your App Store or Play Store, download Push Bullet, Install. Open the application. And then sign in using your Google account. I'm going to skip all these features as I don't need it. And then just click done. Allow all permissions. So here you can see some files and URLs I've already sent. Go to more tools, extensions, scroll all the way down, get more extensions, and then search for push bullet. And then add to Chrome, add extensions. Once it's installed, again, sign in with your Google account. Choose the device you want to send it to. So in this case, I'm going to be sending it to the Note 8. I'm just going to drag the PDF. And you can see that going through. It's done. And then just click download on your phone. I'll do the same thing with the JPEG file. You'd click download. 
and that should go into your downloads folder on your Android phone. So you can see they're there. Just go in to the file explorer on the phone and you'll see they're there. Now certain files like APKs, especially if they're fairly big like this, um, it can take a while to send through this method. So you're better off uh, using the FTP method discussed earlier. So you can see it takes a while for it to upload to the servers. And of course, once it's uploaded to the servers, it'll take a fair bit of time to download it as well. So just looking at the status and the speed at which that's downloading, you can see that will take a little longer. A few moments later. That's downloaded. If I refresh here, you'll see that the APK is now in the folder. You'll also see it in the file explorer. Both the FTP and push bullet methods have their advantages and disadvantages. For instance, using an FTP is good if you want to transfer larger files. You can also use this method to transfer files to your Android TV. In that situation, you would have to install Wi-Fi FTP server app on your Android TV. The downside for this method is that both devices have to be connected to the same network, so it might not be something you can use at the office. With push bullet, just like the FTP method, you can transfer any file type, but it's more suited to smaller files like PDFs and docs. With push bullet, you don't have to be on the same network, you just have to be connected to the internet on both devices. So as long as you have Chrome on your computer and able to install extensions without administrator rights, you should be fine. This has been Raju from Tectonic. If you enjoyed this video and it helped you, please like and subscribe. That would really help me out. Thanks for watching and see you guys later.